Welcome to the Credit Concept Podcast. My name is Credit Coach Nicole Scott, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. If you have not watched any of the previous episodes of the Credit Concept Podcast, head over to YouTube and follow me and watch the entire playlist. You can also listen to the Credit Concept Podcast wherever you get your podcast. Without further ado, guys, today we are going to be talking about a very important question. And this question is something that I am asked, um, if not on a daily basis, you know, I would say probably one of the top five questions that people ask me. And that question is, why are my credit scores different? Why am I, if I look at TransUnion, I have a 700, but when I look at Equifax, it's a 580. Well, in today's episode of the Credit Concept Podcast, we are going to be talking about why your credit scores vary and some of the different factors that you need to look at when you are understanding um, the credit scores. So let's go ahead and let's jump into it. So again, guys, if you have not followed me on Instagram and YouTube, please do so. You can find me at Credit Coach Nicole Scott. There is also a ton of information in the description on how we can connect. If you are interested in learning more about credit, you definitely want to listen to all of the podcast episodes under the Credit Concept Podcast, where we talk about the simple concept of credit. Okay. So now the reason why your credit scores might be different, and there there's a number of different reasons, but I'm going to go over some of the most important factors that you need to pay attention to when you are actually looking at your credit score. So there are different credit scoring models. There are what's called the FICO credit scores, and there are also the Vantage credit scores. A lot of your free credit scores that you're going to see on Credit Karma, uh, Credit Sesame, a lot of these different credit monitoring sites that are free, they're going to be providing you with what's called a Vantage 3.0 scoring model. And that scoring model is just a scoring model that Vantage has put together. Um, and they just use some different algorithms. You just have to understand the data points. So they use a Vantage 3.0 to calculate your credit score. Now there's some good things and bad things about this. Um, the good thing is if you are looking to rent somewhere, typically when a property management company or some sort of rental agency is going to pull your credit, it is most likely going to be some sort of Vantage scoring model. The bad thing is none of the banks are going to be using a Vantage scoring model. So if you're looking at Credit Karma, those are not your FICO scores. So you just have to understand the difference, right? Now, FICO is a different brand. Basically, it's the competitor of uh, Vantage. And the FICO scoring models are very different and there are many different types of FICO credit scores. There is the most commonly used FICO credit scores, which are the FICO 8 and the FICO 9. Uh, FICO 10 just recently came out. So that's another credit scoring model that banks will probably start using here, you know, very soon. And you definitely want to make sure that you get your credit in order before people start using FICO. 10 because they're going to be a little bit more stricter. They're going to be going back 48 months uh, versus the typical scoring models now, FICO 8, FICO 9, which typically look at the last 24 months of your credit history. So that's why it's extremely important to understand your data points and what makes up your credit score, right? Uh, we're not going to get into data points, but I have on some of the other podcast episodes of the Credit Concept Podcast. So basically what we want to look at is we want to look at, okay, when I am looking at this credit score, what scoring model are they using to calculate my credit score? It'll tell you right there. This credit score is using a Vantage 3.0 scoring model. This is using a FICO 8 scoring model, right? So look at the scoring model and then you want to look at the date. This scoring model is used uh, with a Vantage 
3.0 scoring model as of say December 2nd, 2022. Okay. You want to look at the date because different uh, applications will have different updates and the updates are really going to make a difference because say, for example, if you have a credit card and you just used a large purchase or uh, you have a high utilization, that's going to make your credit score go down, right? But if it hasn't updated on some of the credit reporting uh, sites that you're using, then that's going to be a huge factor. So you really want to just pay attention to what type of scoring model is being used to calculate your credit score, the date, when is this as of, right? And then understand the data points and how you can improve your credit score. Obviously, you got to pay your bills on time, right? That's that's number one, just making sure that you're paying the on-time payments. Number two is the credit card utilization. Um, if your credit score has recently gone down, um, right now it's the holidays. So that's typically, typically because you've been using your credit cards and you have a higher credit card balance and that could really make your credit scores go down. Um, maybe you just added history or you added um, a new credit card, which brought down your average history. There's a number of reasons why your credit score can fluctuate, right? But the the rule of thumb is pay your bills on time, especially the credit bills that report to the credit bureaus, um, because not every bill that you pay is going to report to the credit bureaus. And that's very important to understand as well is what bills do you have that are actually being reported to the credit bureaus? Now, typically utility bills are not going to be reported unless you've done some sort of, you know, Experian boost um, and added, the, added them to your credit report. I don't recommend doing that because say, for example, a month is tight or something happens happens. You want to be able to have some bills that you can pay late without it affecting your credit score. Bills that you cannot afford to pay late are bills that report to the credit bureau. Car payments, credit card bills, even if you just have to pay the minimum amount, that's most important um, because having a late payment and sometimes a late payment with certain accounts can report if you're just a few days late, they'll report you as late. So you want to make sure that you are paying your bills on time and just paying the minimum amount due. Now paying the minimum amount due is never recommended. You always want to pay more than the minimum amount, but worst case scenario, you pay the minimum, you stay in good standing. That's what our number one goal is, is just to pay the bills that report to our credit reports on time. And again, those bills sometimes do not include rent unless you've added rent. So a lot of times you might have a little bit of wiggle room with rent. Okay. Um, and that won't affect you long term Cause if you pay a credit card bill late, that could affect you for the next seven years. Cause not every late payment is able to get removed. And, you know, we'll talk about late payments and how to get those corrected in another podcast. But you know, today we're just going to be talking about why your credit scores are different and how how you can control that, right? So, you know, you always want to make sure that you have your bills that report to the credit reporting agencies set up on auto pay because you never want to rely on your brain or reminders or anything other than, you know, automation to make sure that you're paying your bills on time. I always tell my clients, set up your auto pay for the minimum amount due every single month. And then you can always pay additional funds towards the cards or towards the bill if you choose to. Now, obviously if it's a car payment, you don't have to. Once your payment is paid, you're good till the next month. But with credit cards, sometimes you might want to pay more to bring down your credit balance. So your utilization isn't affected. So you want to make sure that you have auto pay set up on your credit bills. Everything else you don't need to set up on auto pay. Uh, Me personally, I don't have my cell phone bill. I don't have any of my utilities set up on auto pay because I like to control all of that and make sure that it's correct. But when it comes to my credit, I have everything on auto pay and I make sure that even the minimum amount due is paid. And I always pay additional funds to my credit accounts every single month. You put it in your budget. 
budget. So if you get paid every two weeks, you want to allocate some of that money to pay more towards your credit cards so that way your credit score can be stronger. Now, another reason why your credit scores might vary from bureau to bureau um, is because not every single credit account that you have is going to report to all three of the credit bureaus. And that's a very common thing. Um, For example, I have a Bank of America account. The Bank of America account only reports to Experian and Equifax. It does not report to TransUnion. So there are some credit accounts that you're going to have that are not going to report to all three. And once you understand the concept of credit, and that's this is what this podcast is all about, the concept of credit and understanding how you can have good credit for the rest of your life because you paying someone for credit repair is not all is not going to be what you need long term. Yes, it's going to help you, but it's going to be a tool that you use because you don't have the time to do it yourself. So you're paying someone to dispute the negative items and maybe do some other things for you. But what you have to do is understand how to not get yourself in that situation in the future. You want to understand what you have to do in order to have the best credit score possible for life. So that way you can educate your children, you can educate your family, you can educate your community on how to have the best credit scores. And sometimes it's just a few tweaks because this type of information is not taught in school. Although when we turn 18, we're expected to move out, we're expected to, you know, get a car and do all of these things, but nobody teaches us about credit. So that's why I do this credit concept podcast, because I want you guys to understand the concept behind credit and how to have credit for a long time and how to have good credit for a lifetime. Um, and you know, sometimes your credit score is going to go up and down. Um, and once you understand, look, your credit score goes up and down based on the different types of scoring models, right? Because there's different scoring models that take in different factors and just you understanding the overall data points. And we'll just touch on those data points real fast. Uh, One is paying your bills on time. Two is making sure that your credit card utilization and utilization is basically how much you are using, how much of the credit limit you are using. So if your credit limit is a thousand dollars and you're using a hundred dollars that you're using 10% of your available credit limit, you want to make sure that your overall all credit utilization, and this is just for your credit cards. We're not going to calculate loans, personal loans, auto loans, or anything like that into this. This is just for credit cards, store credit cards, uh, revolving credit cards that change from you know month to month. We want to make sure that the credit utilization stays below 10%. I would not go higher than 15% um, because of the fact that it is 30% of your credit score. And once you you use these low limit credit cards, say you have a credit card for a thousand dollars, you use it for, you know, $300. You're already putting your utilization up to 30%. That's way too high. That is going to make your credit score go down because they're thinking, whoa, whoa, why do you need to use our money? These credit cards are just a test. And I've seen a lot of people mess up their credit cards over a $500 credit card, over a thousand dollar credit card. These are just a test. It is a test for the creditors and the banks to say, hey, we'll give you a 500, we'll give you a thousand. And and it's going to tell us if we can trust, if they can't, if you can't be trusted to manage a credit card for 500 or a thousand dollars, what makes you think that you're going to get anything further? You know, uh, so you have to look at the bigger picture. If you want to purchase a house, they want to see that you're able to manage your credit cards, which means that you're able to manage your finances. It's a reflection of yourself. It's a test and you have to play the game. And in order for you to play, you have to understand how to move in this credit game. Okay. So, uh, keep your credit card utilization fairly low. Uh, you want to keep it under 10%. The sweet spot is usually between two and 6%. So it's all about 
how much your credit card limits are and what you're using on your cards. If you have higher limits, then you can spend more money on your credit cards and not be affected as much. But if you have $200 credit cards, $500 credit cards, $1,000 credit cards, chances are you shouldn't even really be using them, okay? Uh, until you get some higher limits. You can use them for a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but you need to make sure that that balance is paid in full pretty much every single month. There is no reason why you should be having over a 15% uh, credit utilization. And again, it's not much. So if you're talking about a thousand dollar credit card, $150 is 15%. So you just really want to make sure that that is uh, understood because no one explained that to me uh, before, you know, and I never had over a 700 credit score when I was younger because I just simply didn't understand that concept. So that is really important. And that's an easy fix that a lot of you guys can make. And guess what? Nobody can do that fix, but you. You are the only one that has control over what your credit card utilization is going to be. You can't pay anybody to fix that, okay? That, so that's something that you need to do and you need to understand and you need to be able to understand when the statement date is uh, versus the due date because the statement date is going to be the day that they uh, report to the credit bureaus, they being the creditors, the banks, okay? And you can control all of this. You just have to make sure that your credit card utilization is paid or transferred, balance transferred prior to the statement date. And I recommend three business days prior to the statement date. So it gives it a chance to update with that creditor. So that way, when they do report your account information to the credit bureaus every month on the statement date or as of the statement date, the information is what you want the bureaus to know. Okay. So control that and uh, make sure that you have documented your billing due date, your statement date, and the day that they actually report to the credit bureaus. No matter what day they report to the credit bureaus, and I'll just give you an example, Capital One. So every credit card has a different statement date. So say I have a credit card, the statement date is on the 10th. Capital One is going to report your account information as of the statement date to the credit bureaus three business days after the statement date. So uh, typically it will update about 10 business days after the statement date with all of your credit reports. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, understand when your statement date is, make sure that you put it in your calendar, make sure you know your billing due date, put that in your calendar, and you can put the day that they report to the credit bureaus as well. But you know, the most important date is that statement date. And typically that's going to be the last day of your billing cycle. And if you're not sure how to find that, you can look on your credit card statement. Um, you can also call the bank or a credit card company and ask them, hey, when is my statement date? Because the statement date and your bill due date are two different dates. And if you pay your balance by the statement date, you should not have a balance due by the due date. Uh, so that's a little bit of extra game for you. And then the third is credit history. You want to make sure that your credit history is, you know, an average of five years or more. Um, any Anywhere around that range. And, you know, if you're constantly adding new credit cards, new credit lines to your credit profile, then obviously it's going to bring down your average uh, history because your history is calculated based on an average. How long have these accounts been open on average? So if you have student loans, um, those are really going to help with your overall credit age because those are typically some of the first credit lines that you ever opened. You probably opened them when you were, you know, a teenager, early 20s, and you've been paying on them ever since. So those are really great age trade lines. And that's just, you know, an account that is on your credit profile that helps give you age. If you need help increasing your age, you can always ask add authorized user trade lines. We have a list in the description where you can purchase some of our trade lines to increase your age, which will help, you know, uh, bring your credit score up. And then obviously when you add trade lines, that also adds available credit, which can bring your 
your utilization down. You can also add higher limits, which will help you obtain higher limit credit cards and credit accounts. So, you know, it's all a game, right? Um, the fourth thing is the credit mixture. This is really for your credit profile. The credit mixture should look something like this. You want to have, you know, close to 10 credit accounts on your credit profile, two personal loans, you know, no more than four personal loans would be any sort of, you know, or installment loans, you know, installment loans, car loans, student loan, a personal loan, any sort of loan that you have that you're paying on a monthly basis. Um, and hopefully that loan reports to all three of the credit bureaus. You just want to make sure that you get a copy of your credit reports and you can use smart credit. I'll leave the link in the description for you to get your credit reports with smart credit so you can understand what's on your credit report and how to, um, you know, understand, Hey, these are some things that are affecting me. Uh, you can also use the, my FICO app. My FICO app is going to give you your FICO scores. It is a little bit more expensive, but for those of you that want to know what your true FICO scores are, the Mike FICO app is a great way. But for those of you that say, Hey, look, I know I need to work on my credit. I just want to know what's on there. Smart credit is a great option for you guys to get your credit reports. It's got all three of the credit bureaus side by side. So you can literally see what is reporting to each of the credit bureaus, which makes it super easy to understand. Um, but yeah, that credit mixture, you want to have, you know, a few personal loans or installment loans, no more than four. And then you want to have at least six credit cards. And most of those credit cards should have a zero balance. If not all of them, you should only really have like one credit card that you really use. But, um, I'll just give you an example. I, you know, started building my credit, rebuilding my credit, uh, about four years ago. And I had to start off with some secured credit cards and they're very low limit. They're only $200, $500, you know, thousand dollars. Those credit cards, I do not even use. They are in a drawer. Um, they just sit there. They're not going to close due to inactivity because they have my deposit. They have my money and eventually, you know, I'll cancel them out. But right now they're helping me because they have age and it's kind of like a savings account because a lot of people, they don't keep their secured credit cards open long enough because they need the money. Well, you have to, and just think of it like a long-term savings because this is helping you get to the next level, right? Because sometimes you're not going to get approved for credit cards right off the bat. They have to be able to trust you. They have to give you the test, right? And the test is these low limit credit cards because they want to see if you are able to manage your finances properly, right? And if you can be trusted, can you be trusted? That's all that they care about. So you want to make sure that you have a nice credit mixture. And of course, a lot of your credit cards do not have a balance on them. The more credit cards you have, the better, because that just shows that you have all this available credit, you don't need it. And that's always a good thing. So if you want to start collecting credit cards, like many people do, uh, by all means, go right ahead and do that. But that brings me to another topic. Um, number five is the amount of inquiries that you have on your credit report. Now, if you have inquiries that are attached to an open credit account, then that's one thing. Um, and that's okay. You know, I have 10 inquiries on one of the bureaus because I've been opening credit a lot over the last two years, but, um, you can also try to remove those inquiries before the account hits your profile. If you don't want the inquiry on there, I don't recommend disputing inquiries that are tied to accounts that are actually listed on your credit profile, but you definitely want to clean up your credit inquiries. So if you need help uh, getting inquiries removed from your credit profile, we can help do that. We do offer coaching, credit coaching, business coaching, but we also offer credit repair services as well to certain individuals that are looking to, you know, get help in this situation. We assist you, of course, we educate you and we make sure that you understand the concept of credit, okay, when you are a client. And we are very strict on who we work with. We have to work with people who are serious. We have to work with people who really want this. I'm not going to work with people who are just going to say, well, you know, just do it all. Um, I don't want to do anything. Well, I can only do so much. I need you to be a part of the team, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. So we got to work together to make it work. But you definitely want to just pay attention to the amount of inquiries that you have on each of the bureaus. And of course, every creditor is going to pull from multiple bureaus or different 
bureaus and they might pull from, you know, multiple bureaus. So that's another thing that you have to consider. You might have three inquiries on Equifax, but you might have 17 inquiries with Experian because you have to understand what's on each of your credit reports. Um, and that could be a reason why your credit scores are different, right? Inquiries are only about 10% of your credit score, so they don't have that much value, but sometimes you can get declined if you have a bunch of inquiries on your credit report, but there's no accounts that you have open with them. That means that everyone declines you basically. And that's what it looks like. So that's just a bad sign. And then number six is derogatory and collection accounts. If you have derogatory accounts, which can be considered a collection or a charge off, that is definitely going to affect your credit score. And I'll just give you an example. I'm working with a client right now. We only have one one collection account left on Experian. All of their other credit scores are in the high 700s. One is even in the 800s. But since they have one collection left on Experian, Experian is only a 723. So again, you just understanding the data points as to why your credit score is different. They're looking at the different credit scoring models, uh, understanding when this data is as of. Is it as of today or is it is it as of two weeks ago, right? And then understanding what you need to do in order to get that number up, whether that's pay down your credit cards, uh, get that collection off of your credit reports, clean up those inquiries that are not tied to any open active lines of credit, whatever you need to do, you've got to do those things because either you pay someone to do it or you do it yourself. I empower people to do it themselves, but I also help people because I know it is tedious and I know it is time consuming and not everyone has the patience time or wants to do it. But for those of you that have the time that want to do it, you can totally do it. Um, if you head over to my website or you can go to the description, we have a credit repair DIY kit that you can purchase that has the dispute letters. We have our letter library that you can purchase. And those are some great tools to help you get the dispute letters that you need in order to dispute any negative information that is affecting your credit score, whether that's a collection, a charge off, a inquiry. You can also correct your personal information, which I highly recommend is the first thing that you do is, you know, correct your personal information. Make sure they have the correct name, address, employer, all of those good things for you. You don't have to have an employer listed, but you do want to make sure that your correct name and your correct address is showing on your credit report under your personal information. You want to make sure that you do not have a consumer statement. Again, you do not have a consumer statement. If you got credit repair in the past, you might have some sort of consumer statement because once we start disputing items on your credit report, sometimes they'll put notes in your consumer statement without your knowledge. And that's just the credit bureaus. So you want to make sure that if you have any sort of consumer statement saying that you've been a victim of fraud or uh, you don't agree with something or whatever it is, just have them remove it. You do not want a consumer statement. Less is better. Okay. So again, guys, I appreciate you for listening to me ramble on about credit, but it is important to me for you guys to know this information um, and for you to understand it, process it, and understand the concept of credit. Understand what you need to do in order to get your credit score in the best shape possible. Possible, so that way you can get the best deals, the best interest rates, the best credit cards. You deserve the best. And even though you might not make a ton of money, you can live a lavish lifestyle with credit. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I had a client that I helped that worked for the police department and they told me, you know, they made more money than one of the admin staff there. But the admin staff lived a better life. They lived in a nicer home. They had a nicer car and it wasn't because they made more money. It was because they had a better credit score. So when they went to get a car, their interest rate was super low. When they went to buy a house, their interest rate was super low and your interest rate can determine whether or not you're going to be saving or spending hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, uh, because there's a huge difference in getting an auto loan with a 2% interest rate versus a 22% interest rate. 
And, you know, that is one of the things that we have to understand is we get so excited when we get approved, we take it, but that's not always the best financial decision. We have to understand the concept. We have to understand the concept behind credit, how it works and how we can have the best credit score by, you know, leveraging knowledge. So again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel at Credit Coach Nicole Scott. Follow me on Instagram. Check out all all of the information in the description. I have left a free credit builder guide down there for you guys to help you rebuild credit. I also do business credit as well. So if you're interested in building your personal credit or business credit, you guys know how to get a hold of me. My name is credit coach Nicole Scott. I am your host of the Credit Concept Podcast, and I wish you guys the best. Take care.